Hello, this is Thomas, N1SPY, and while I was rummaging through the garage, I found this old TV rabbit ear antenna. You can tell that it's old because of the twin lead wire here. They haven't been used in, in TV antennas for like at least 30 years. And um, when I found it, I thought that maybe you can receive some satellite signals with it, and that's going to be my next project, receiving some satellite signals with this here rabbit ear antenna. And so, let's get on with the rabbit ear antenna versus modern satellite. So, these are the supplies I'll be using for my satellite project. This TV antenna over here that I talked about, this tape measure over there that will help me measure out the resonant frequency. Satellites transmit at 137 megahertz. So resonant length is about 20 and a half inches, and the tape measure will help me measure that out on our antenna. I'll also be using the, uh, that rectangular um, thing right there, which is an SDR receiver. SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. It's not the best receiver, but it costs next to nothing and will, and will uh, get the frequency we need and will receive perfectly fine. Here, I will also be using this laptop with a decoder that can decode the signal. The image decoder is called WX to image and stands for weather to image. So I'm totally ready to, to make some contacts through the satellites and listen in. As you can see, I've mounted uh, my antenna on a makeshift tripod and I've measured it to to, so both sides are about 20 inches in length. If the satellite goes low below the horizon, this antenna is pointed north and south, and so it kind of compensates for the signal. So we should be getting um, at least an okay signal at all times. As you can see, the satellite is coming up the coast of South America, and it should be in our horizon pretty soon. Um, it's it's um, It travels very fast, so it should come here soon and we'll start receiving the signal in a couple minutes. Those little green streaks there, that's actually the signal coming through, and um, that's the weather image. And now we're probably going to switch into my screen recorder so that we can decode the image. So this is the screen recorder that shows the project of pro progress of the project. <laughs> so the satellite will quickly come up over the horizon and we'll see the signal improving. And um, the satellite that we're receiving from is NOAA 19 on 137.1 megahertz. It was launched in 2009 and is a relatively large satellite. It weighs about 3,000 pounds and it circles about 530 miles above Earth. It goes around the planet once every hundred minutes or so. And when the satellite passes overhead, it needs 10 minutes to go from horizon to horizon. Depending on the pass, it can come in from the south and go to the north, or from, or from the north going to the south. Receiving radio signals from satellites is tricky because they move at a very high speed, and on top of that, most satellites spin as they move. So you would have to move your antenna constantly, and ours is tied to a little stand, so um, we can't move it. And that's why the antenna I'm using is not very well suited for that kind of reception. And to make it better, it's possible to extend the pieces a bit and twist them like a spiral. But I think my rabbit ear antenna will do just fine. The picture we are receiving is from only one of the instruments that are on the satellite. The power of the transmitter is about 800 watts, and that's pretty powerful in the world of satellites. Compared to everyday things, a hairdryer consumes about 800 watts, so the transmitter on a space satellite is about as powerful as a hairdryer. 
Software that tracks satellites uses six parameters called Keplerian elements. If you enter those six parameters for any satellite, we can calculate the precise time when it, when it will pass overhead. These parameters are, like, are, are things like eccentricity, orbital inclination, and others. As you can see, the image is built line by line, and sometimes lines can be a little off from the line above, but that is very easy to adjust in the software. The instruments on the satellite do not build a picture and then transmit it. They transmit continuously as they look down. By the way, when the satellite was being built, number 19, the last in the NOAA series, a technician made a mistake and from its hoisted position, it was dropped on the shop floor. I'm terrified of dropping even my phone or a laptop on the floor, and imagine a nearly complete weather satellite being dropped on, a f on the floor. I read the story about it and it costed $135 million in repairs. That technician must have been fired. And I call this sound the heartbeat, and let's listen to it for a few seconds. In a minute, I'll open up the finalized images and see how they look. So this is my finished project, and it looks pretty good. So in the battle of TV antenna versus NOAA weather satellite, it looks like the TV antenna held its own and won. So I'd call this project a success. What do you think? Thanks for watching.